Hi guys and welcome to my channel and thanks for stopping by and watching. In this spray paint art video I'll be trying out the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch spray paint to see what it's like for spray paint art. So the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch comes in a 400ml can and has an unknown valve system. It comes with a stock cap that is also unknown. The lacquer base I'm not sure about, I think it's acrylic. It has a gloss finish and there are around 42 colours in the range. The price per can may vary depending on what country you live in. In the UK it can cost anything between £6 and £13 depending on where you buy it from. And the colours I'll be using are cherry red, real orange, black and white. Right before I go any further I'd just like to say these are my own thoughts and findings about how well the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch spray paint works for making spray paint art. Right, the first thing I'm going to do is a cap test to see how the cap sprays. So I'll be using the stock cap that comes with the cans in this video, which is an unknown cap. And I'll be doing the cap test on a 4 inch wide piece of glossy card. Right then, before you use the cans, make sure you give them a good shake for at least 2 minutes each. And when you get them, there'll be a plastic cap on them like this. This is only there to protect the cap so it doesn't spray everywhere while in transit. So I'm going to be using the black spray paint to do the cap test. So when you get the cans they'll be like this with the cap on the top. So all you have to do is press it together and the cap pops off. And I think I'm going to use one of these caps from off the cans as one of the lid stencils for one of the planets in the video because it's got a nice thin lip on it. So I'll just put that to one side for a minute. So this will be the first time I've used the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch spray paint. So I'm not sure how it's going to work or spray. But we'll find out in a bit. So like I said, I'm going to be doing a cap test with the black spray paint. So I'm just going to pull some of the paint through the cap. Grab some black through the cap. And like I said, I'll be doing it on the... 4 inch wide piece of glossy card, the cap test, which is this here. So I'll just spray a line on here. As you saw there, the cap produced a thin line and it didn't let too much paint out, which is good. So I'm presuming these caps are something like a skinny cap the way it sprayed the line here, which is good. So I'll just give you a closer look of the line it produced, the cap. Sit that back there. Now the cap test is out of the way, I'm going to see what it's like to paint with. So for this space painting I'll be using glossy card which is A2 in size and the materials I'm going to be using are some lid stencils, these are just lids off food tubs, different size ones and I'm also going to be using the cap off one of the spray cans in this video. I'm going to be using a pally knife to sign the painting with at the end. I'm going to be using a metal paint scraper you can get these in different sizes, small ones and big ones. For this video I'm going to use this big one here. I'm also going to be using this food tub, which is a cone shaped food tub, which will put a hole in the bottom. And the last thing I'm going to be using are some plastic sheets. This is, these are from a bag that I've cut up so it's easier to use in the painting. These are going to be used to make the texture on the planets and in the background of the painting. Right then, so I'll just move this orange paint out of the way. And then we can start to paint. So the first thing you want to do is get your lid stencils and place them on the sheet where your planets are going to go. So I'm going to have a big one here, I think. I'll have one over here in this corner. I think one up here. Like I said, I'll be using a cap from off the cans for one, and I think I'll have that one somewhere there. And then once you've got your lid stencils on, you want to get a colour and then spray around them to give you an outline of where your plants are going to go. 
So for this, I'm going to use a real orange. So I'm just going to pull some of the paint through, some of the orange paint. So we've got some paint through. Like I said, we'll just spray around these lightly. So that's the outlines done around your planet. So I'm just going to give the cap a test, see what it's like for spraying in the valve system. So I'm just going to press the cap lightly. And then all the way down. So the cap didn't let too much paint out, which is good. And I think these cans are high pressure cans. Because of the way it forces the paint out. So I'll just give it a few more goes. So I'll press it lighter. And then harder. See, if you press it hard and get too close, it'll start pooling. So you want to be a bit higher up. So I quite like this can. The valve system in them and the caps seem to work pretty well. So we'll stick the orange back there and we'll take the lid stencils off and place them out of the way for now. So now we have the outlines of where the plants are going to go. We can fill the outlines in with some colours. So first up I'm going to start with this big planet here. So I'm going to put some orange down first. So just rain it lightly for now, see what it's like. A bit more harder. Quite like this, it doesn't produce that much paint. And the valve system's quite easy to press down. So I'll move on to a red, just pull some red. Some of this cherry red through the cap. I'm just going to spray a bit over this orange in places. So I like that, so I'm going to leave that like that. Now we're going to get some black. And cover some of the colours in with the black. And now the other half here with white. So just pull some paint through. Now some white. So that's the colours down for your planet. Like I said, I'm going to be using the plastic bag that I've cut up so it's easier to use to make me texture with in this painting. So what you want to do is just crunch it up so you get some crinkled lines in it, like that. And all we're going to do is place it over the paint, the wet paint, and give it a light rub to produce your texture on your planet. Then we'll peel it back. So I like the texture on that, so I'm going to leave it. So now we're going to move on and do the highlights and shadows on the planet. So we're going to do the highlights first, which is going to be here. So we're going to be using the white for that. And what we're going to do is just spray it lightly this side. So just press the cap down light and then we're just going to do like a mist effect over it so you can still see the colours underneath. So press the cap down lightly and do like a mist, like that. So that's produced a nice mist there and you can still see the colour underneath. And now we'll go with the black and do the shadowed area. So I'll do for the shadowed area. I have noticed while doing this planet that the paint is a bit thinner than some of the other brands. But well, that's all right because it can work to your advantage, thin paint, when you're doing like mist and stuff like that. Now we have a big planet done, we'll move on to this one here. So I'll grab the orange, I'll spray a bit in there, fill the, out, fill the outline in. Now some red. Some black. 
and some white. So we'll get a clean piece of a uh, plastic sheet the bag will have cut off. And all we're going to do for this one is fold it in half and fold it in half again like this. And I'm just going to place it over paint and turn it on the wet paint. So place it down. We're just going to turn it to mix the colours up. So I like the way that's looking, so I'm going to leave that like that, the texture. So we'll move back to the white and do the highlights first. So like I said, press the cap down lightly to make your highlight on the planet. And it's going to go here. So press it lightly. So like that. These cans and caps are really nice for misting, I quite like that. Now we'll move to the black, do the shadowed area here. Yeah, I like the valve system on these, real nice to press. Get good control over it when you're pressing it as well, which is good. Now we've had one out of well, we'll move on to this one up here. So I think I'll get some red first for this one. some orange and then some black and some white so now we have the colours on the planet we'll do some texture on it so I'll get another sheet of a plastic bag that I've cut off so just this one I'm going to crinkle it this way, just move that out of the way. That's it. So like I said we'll crinkle it up this way so it gives you a different texture on it, different crinkles, lines on it. And what we'll do is place it over wet paint and just give it a light rub. Then we'll peel it off to produce your texture. So I quite like that texture on there. So I'm going to leave that like that. So we'll move on to the highlight first. So pressing your cap lightly, we'll highlight it here on this side. So that's your highlight done. Now the shadowed area at the back. So I'll do for the shadowed area, and I'll move on to this last one here. So some red. Some orange. And just be careful when you go to do these smaller planets, that you spray the caps a bit lighter. Because if it's too much paint in a small area, the paint will start to separate from each other. So when you're doing a smaller area like that, just press the cap a bit lighter than say you were doing a big planet like this. So I might have put a bit too much paint down there, but I'll see when I put the black and white over it now. So we'll get some black first. The shadowed area is going to go here. And now some white over this front part. as you can see I didn't put too much paint down which is good and the paint hasn't started separating. So I'll grab another piece of a plastic sheet and just crunch it up. I'm just going to crunch this one up lightly so it produces fewer lines or crinkles in it and we'll just place it on the paint over a planet and give it a light rub and we'll just pull it off gonna go back and do a bit more on this this side here yeah if you do go back over and do your texture just press it a bit more lighter because you don't want all the colors mixing up because the more you pull the texture off your planets and will make your texture the more chance of paint will mix together 
and then you'll lose the colours you've already put down. So I'll leave a texture on that, so we'll move on and put the highlights and shadows on it. So I'm going to have the highlighted area here. So just be careful you don't spray on the other planet that you've already done. So with a white presser cap down lightly, we'll do the missing area there, the highlighted area. So I like that, so I'm going to leave that. And now we'll go on to the black and do the shadowed area. So I like the way that's looking. So I'm going to leave that like that. Right then, now we have all the highlights and shadows on the planet. It's time to put the lid stencils back on. But ideally, you want the paint to be dry before doing this. Because if the paint's still wet and you place your lid stencils on, the lid stencils will stick to the wet paint. So when you lift them off later on, there may be a few rings around your planet. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and place the lid stencils on while the paint is still wet. So if the lids do get stuck to the wet paint and leave rings on the planet, I can show you what I'm on about. So the first lid stencil I'm going to put on is a big one. Just make sure you've got a bit of a shaded area and the highlighted area underneath your lid stencil. This paint seems to be pretty wet still, but I'm just going to go ahead and place the lid stencil on. So that's a big one on. I'm going to put this one on here. And this one here. And then the cap from the top of the can. Put that one there. So like I said, this paint seems to be a bit wet still. It's taking a bit longer to dry. So I may have a few rings on the planets when I take the lid stencils off. So we'll just have to wait and see. It may happen, it may not. So now we've got the lid stencils on, we'll move on to the background. So I'm going to get the black, I'm just going to spray all the background black. So when you're spraying around these lead stencils, just make sure you spray the cap a bit lighter so you get no leaking underneath, no overspray underneath your lead stencil. So I'll go around the lid stencils first. So just press the cap lightly as you go around them. And the big one. Now this last one. So the thing I have noticed while covering the background around these lid stencils is the paint that was left behind before I put the lid stencils on. It seems to be a bit thin this paint. So it's showing through a bit. So I'll just carry on and paint the background black. So I'm going to press the cap all the way down for this. We've got a nice coverage there yeah, with the cap all the way down. So that's the background done with all the black. So now we're going to add some colours to it. I think I'll just add some colours here in the middle first. So first I'm going to add red, the cherry red to it. So I'm going to hold it a couple of foot, two foot up from the painting and just spray it on. So quite like that, just do a bit around the edge, mist it out a bit. So quite like that. Now I'm going to go to the orange. And I'm going to get a bit closer because I want a bit of orange in the middle. So I'm just pressing the cap lightly here. So 
but I like the way that's looking, so I'm going to leave that. I think what I might do is, I might just put a bit of colour here in the background, something like a bit of a galaxy or something here in this corner. So I'm going to get some red first. Add a bit of texture in the back of the background of the painting. So add some red on. I'll get the orange, spray a bit in the middle, I think. A bit more of a red, I think. Now I'm just going to put a bit of white down the middle. White line, I think. I think a bit of orange as well over it. You can do whatever you want in your background. It's up to you. I think I might just add a bit of black over this as well. Not much. So I'm just pressing the cap lightly to cover it up. So I think I'll do there. So what I'm going to do is get another piece of the plastic bag that I've cut up. I'm just going to crunch it up a bit. So you get some lines in it like that. The same as we did on the planet. Then just going to place it over the wet paint where you want your texture, your galaxy, something like that. Give it a light rub. And then we'll peel it off. So quite like that. So I'm just gonna go around the edges a bit with a bit of clean piece of the plastic. Just dab it in places. So I like the way that's looking. I like the effect it's given, quite nice. So now what I'm gonna do is just blend this back in into the background. So I'm gonna get some black first, I think. Just spray this top part here. Not much, just lightly. And around there. Now I'm just going to do a bit of mist on here, I think a bit, a bit of a red I think. The only thing I'm noticing with these is, because there's no colour indicators on the top of cans, you've always got to have a look at the label to see what can you're picking up. So if you've got all the cans facing this way, away from you like that, you don't know what colours you're picking up. But it's not big, it's not that big of an issue. You can always just make sure your cans are like this, so you can see on, or you could just write what colour they are on the lid, on the top here. So I'll give it red, like I said, I'm going to put some mist here in the background to blend this galaxy or something into the rest of the background. So with the red, we're just going to do a mist, so lightly press your cap down. So these caps produce a real nice mist, I quite like that. I think I might just add a bit of orange as well to it, not much. We'll do the same, press the cap lightly. So I like that, so I'm going to leave that like that. I've just noticed that something's dropped on the painting here. Not sure what it is, but I'm going to have to leave that in the painting because if I try and lift it off, it's going to wreck the painting now. So I'll just leave that like it is. So I think I might add something here in the bottom, a bit of colour behind this big planet. So first up, I'm going to get a red. Just spray it lightly. So when you're spraying colours close to your lid stencils, you want to spray the paint here, somewhere on the lip here, on the top because any overspray will produce a colour on the painting. So we'll get in, spray it here towards the lid. And then you can bring the colours out by pressing the cap onto the painting. Now I'll go a bit of orange, just lightly. Now as 
been a bit of a mistake there because the paint's too runny and I've sprayed too much paint there got too close to it it's now pooled here by, by the lid stencil but I'm going to leave that like that so I can show you that when I lift the lid stencil off it might wreck this planet now it might not it just depends but I've also got to put it just a tiny bit of colour on this, one last colour, so I'm going to use white. So I'm going to have to press the cap real light here. So just a bit in the middle. I think that'll do. If I put any more, it'll definitely wreck the painting. So now I've added a bit of colour here in the background, I'm just going to go back to the black and just go around it a bit. Just around this edge, I think bring a bit of black in so I'm just pressing it lightly so I think that'll do for the background I'm liking the way the background's looking I'm not sure about this it's definitely running a lot off here definitely pooling here so I might have some leakage underneath here this lid stencil but like I said We'll find out when I lift the lid stencil off. So with all the colours and that added to the background, we'll move on to add some stars to the painting. So for this, I'm going to add the small stars first. So I'll be using a white spray paint and spraying some on our fingers here. So you have something like that. And what you want to do is when you spray some on your fingers, it's flicking away from the painting a few times to get most of the paint off your fingers because if you spray it on and flick it straight onto the painting it'll produce big white blobs that don't look like stars so spray some on your fingers flick it away a few times and then flick the rest onto your painting so spray flick away and then flick onto your painting you can add as many or as little stars as you want in your painting, it's up to you. I think I'll just do one more. Couple up the back here. Couple there. I think I'll do, I like that. So I'm just going to wipe this white paint off my fingers. Now we have the small stars in the painting. I'm going to add a big star using the metal paint scraper and the white spray paint. I think I'm going to, I'm going to put the star here in the middle of this colour here. So when you're making your lines for your stars, you want to spray the white paint somewhere in the middle of your scraper like here because the overspray will be reducing the lines for your star. And you also want to get as close as you can to the painting so your lines are neater. So with the scraper and the white paint, I'm going to put the lines in. Just remember, spray the white here in the middle. And also, when you spray these lines for the stars, just keep an eye on your scraper. Make sure there's not a build-up of paint on it. Because if you get too much, your paint will run off and drop onto your painting and leave big white blobs over it. So if you do get too much on it, you can always just wipe it off with a cloth or something. So the paint's off it. So that way it won't drip off onto your painting. So now we've done the first line, we'll move on to the second line. So that's the second line done. So like I said, just keep an eye on this scraper. What I'm going to do for this is I'm going to wipe it every time. 
That way you've got less chance of a paint running off and dripping onto your painting. So now we'll add the last two lines in. So I'll put that one there. See that almost ran off there. I'm not sure whether you can see. So wipe it again. It takes a bit longer doing this, wiping it off each time. I'd rather take me time than have the white paint run off the scraper and drop all over your painting. So now we'll add the fourth line to the star. So there are the lines done for the star and I'm really happy with the way they've turned out, I really like them. Right, the next thing we're going to do is put a white dye in the middle of these lines, straight out of the cap. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to test it on this piece of card here to see what it's like to do a dot. So I'll press the cap lightly, a bit harder. So I think that'll be alright to spray straight the cap onto there. Doesn't produce a big white dot. So what you want to do is get your cap and line it up with where all the lines cross over. And then we're just going to spray the cap lightly. Hopefully I'll get this in the middle. So I'm liking the way that looks, so I'm going to leave that. It's produced a nice star, I like that big star, I like how it looks. Now we have a big star in the painting, we'll move on to add a different type of star. And this star I'll be making with the cone shaped food tub with the hole in the bottom. And what I'm going to do is add a few coloured stars to it. So I think I'll get the orange first. And what we'll do is we'll just spray the paint straight through the top of this cone shaped food tub and some of the paint will come out of the bottom which will produce like a smaller colourful star. So I think I'll have one here first. So you want to hold it about a couple of inches above the painting and just spray straight through. So you can get a coloured spot there. I think I'll have an orange one up over here I think as well. also do like red colours or any colours you want depending what colours you're using I think I might just put a red one here oh that's not very good so with the paint being thin it's pulled up in this cone shaped food tub and ran out the bottom that's the thing you gotta watch with thinner paint when you're spraying things. I don't matter, I can fix that I think. So if that does happen to you, you can get something like a sponge or something like that and try and soak some of the paint up. Not sure whether it'll work. So you just want to soak some of the paint up, the red dot. It may muck the back background up a bit. But at least you won't have these big dots on the painting. I'll just get another piece, a cleaner piece. Let's try and bring some more off. Right, so as you can see, I've lifted most of the red paint off there, which dripped out of the food tub here. So what you could do is you could leave that as like something in the background or something. Or you could just touch it up or something. Um, I think I might just touch that up just to show you. So what you can do is, 
I'll go back and get the red paint. I'm just going to spray a bit there. A bit of mist or summit. It might cover it, it might not. With it being thin paint. I'll put a bit of orange, I think. Like that. So I've covered it back up a bit with a bit of colour. You can still see it a bit, but it just looks like it's part of a galaxy, part of a background now. What you could also do is if you've gone and retouched it up here, you might have lost some of your stars or, some, or whatever there. So I'm just going to add a few more stars. So just spray the white on your fingers, flick it away from the painting a bit. And I'm just going to... Add a few stars. I'm not going to put many, so I've not got much paint on my finger here. So there's some smaller stars added. It's covered that up quite nicely, I think. So with that covered up, I'm going to go back and put a red dot here somewhere for another star. But first, I'm just going to wipe this comb-shaped food tub out. Get rid of some of this paint. I'll show you how much it pulled up in here now. So I've wiped this comb shaped food tub out now. As you can see on the sponge, there's quite a bit of red paint in there, red and orange. So I'll chuck that out of the way now, that sponge. I'll get the red spray paint again. I'm just going to do the red star here. So hold it about an inch, inch and a half above the painting and we'll just spray through. So I'll do for that. So I'm just going to have to keep an eye on this. Now this cone shaped food tub. So now we've got the colour for these smallest colourful stars. We can add a bit of white into the middle so we look like the shining stars. So I'll start with this one first here. So we're just going to press the cap real light on this white and try and get it into the middle of the colour. And then over here. And this one here. Oh. So I'll press the cap down too hard there. Because when you're using different paints or you're just starting out spray paint art or something like that, it'll take a while to get used to the pressure and how far to press the cap down when doing different things. So I'm not quite used to it, the way the pressure is in the cans and how far to press the cap down when doing things. So now we'll move over to this red one here. Just press it lightly. So I'll do. So that's some white in the middle of these stars and this big one here, I'm just going to have to try and sort some of it out because it's just too white there. So I'm going to hold the orange a bit further up. I'm just going to spray it lightly on it. But, like I said, this paint is runny. So I'm going to have to Try and get this orange paint off now. So the same as I did the red, I'm just going to dab it with this sponge. I'm not surprised that this happened. This dropped again on the painting. I should have just kept an eye on that cone shaped thing, but never mind. You learn from your mistakes. I'm going to just put some texture in here with this sponge, I think, while I'm here. So that's the orange paint off there. So I've cleaned the cone-shaped food tub out again now. And I'm going to have to add a bit of orange or something up here, so... I'm not going to spray much and then I'm going to leave it after that.
Oh, see, yeah, the paint's just so runny. So I'm going to, I'm not going to use this cone shaped object now in the painting because it's just going to wreck the painting. So I've got another sponge here. I'm just going to dab it a bit more. Oh, I'm just going to do this on the painting, I think. I'll do. So I'm going to not do any more of these stars with that cone shaped food tub because the paint's too runny. Thin paint. So after one or two sprays, it's just coming straight onto the painting. So I'm just going to cover it up. So I'm going to get the black. I'm just going to spray some black over it. I think I'll just get some red. Try and blend it back in. And some orange. Now we've covered it up a bit. Get the white. Just add a few more stars there. Back over where we've just gone over. I'm not going to do any more to this background, I'm just going to leave it like that because I don't want to use this comb shaped up food tub again because the paint's a bit too runny and after you've sprayed it two or three times it's just dropping out of the bottom and leaving them big blobs on the painting. So like I said this was the first time using this paint so I wasn't sure how it was going to work but I'm really happy with the way this big star's turned out and I like this part here, the galaxy in the background. And I like the colours in it. It's just these three smaller stars here that I'm not really happy about. There's just too much white in the middle. But like I said, I'm going to leave out like that and move on to taking the lid stencils off. Right then, I'm going to take this lid stencil off first. The cap from the cans. So like I said, the paint was wet when I put these lid stencils on, so these might be a bit stuck. So that one wasn't stuck. We're going to move on to this one now. So just take your time lifting them off. This one was a bit stuck here. As you can see, it's left a bit of a ring here on the back of the planet, on the shadowed area. This is what I mean about when you put your lid stencils on where you'll have these bit of kind of rings on your planet where the lid stencils sat on the wet paint. To avoid this, all you have to do is put the lid stencils on when the paint is dry. So now we'll move on to this lid here. So as you can see round here, it's left a bit of a ring on the planet. And now we'll move on to this big lid stencil here. I'm not really sure how this one's going to turn out. Because like I said, when I sprayed a bit of colour here, it was a bit too runny and it's pulled here on the back of the lid. But there's only one way to find out and that's to take the lid stencil off. So just lift it off like slowly and lightly because the background's still wet and the lid stencil was stuck a bit and left a few rings on there see where the lid stencil was sticking to the wet paint here and round here but sometimes when you get the rings on the planet they do fit in with the painting and look nice. So that big planet's turned out better than I thought. You can see the paint has pulled here, but we're seeing on the edge of the lip there. So hopefully that won't run onto the black now. So I'm quite surprised it hasn't. So it's just one last thing to do before the painting's finished, and that is to sign your painting. I'm going to sign mine here in this corner, I think. So with a pally knife, just sign it like that. So I think the rust oleum painter's touch worked well for spray paint art. The stock cap that came with the cans worked really well and didn't let too much paint out, which is good. But at times, if I got too close to the painting, 
but when I did the stars with the cone shaped food tub it did let a bit too much paint out. I think that was down to me not being used to the caps and the pressure in the cans. If I was going to use the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch for spray paint art, then I would just use the stock cap that came with the cans. The paint did take a while to dry and was still wet 20 minutes after I'd finished the painting. This could have been down to the paint being a bit thinner than other brands, so I had to put more paint down to cover things up. The valve system in the cans, which I think was an eye pressure valve system, gave a good control over how much paint came out when pressing the cap down with different pressures. It may just take a bit of practice getting used to the pressure and how far to press the cap down when doing different things. But overall, I enjoyed painting with a Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch spray paint. Even though I did mess some things up in the painting, I still like how the painting has turned out. I found it nice to use and the colours I chose were nice and bright. And also just remember to take your time, enjoy what you're painting and let each layer stage dry before moving on to the next. So I'll just give you a closer look of the painting. This paint's still really runny. So I'm just going to have to watch it and I'll lift it up and I don't want this to run either. So that's a closer look of the painting. So I hope you found the information in this video helpful and enjoyed watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for stopping by and watching. I hope to see you all in the next spray paint art video. Have a great day, take care and bye for now.